Hello, everyone, and welcome to the five-minute version of my interview with Louis Peachy, an Australian Aboriginal physician and a man who's had many accomplishments and many challenges that he's overcome. And he, we're here at the Australian Association for Psychological Medicine Conference, and We've just talked for over an hour and just to seduce some of you into listening to the longer discussion that we had, I want to ask Lewis, so what was the most important topic to you that we talked about today? Um, about overcoming, about my book, and about the future, about um, the uh, the world that a lot of Aboriginal children are still born into is a world that's not kind to Aboriginal children. It's a world that doesn't give them the greatest sin that was committed against Aboriginal children in the history of this country is being the theft of health. Uh, so, so the theft of land was not a good thing. Um, the theft of culture is also not a very good thing. But beyond those two things, the worst thing was the theft of hope. And when you take hope from a child, you take away their future. There's nothing that's left. You know? Um, um, but the secret to it all is if you can re-inject that child with hope, if you can give that child a belief that they can actually change the world that they're living in, that they can change their circumstance, that it's actually possible and plausible for you to get out of your hope, that it's possible and plausible that despite the circumstances into which you're born, that you can have a life like everybody else. And if you can give that child hope, then in fact you do, you, you give them the world. Um, and and that that's the message that we need to give to our young people. Education is an incredible one for it. And what we need to do as adults before that child gets education is to give the child hope, to give them a, a reason to believe that they can get a better hope. That and that's incredibly important. And and one of the things that I remember that I was so deeply impressed with was when you were born, you weren't a person. Yes. <laughs> and, and so you were like Pinocchio. Absolutely. So I am Pinocchio. When I was born, um, um, I didn't count in the census. Um, um, that I was excluded from the Constitution of Australia. So, so the terms that mentioned at the chapter book and the Constitution actively excluded us. So at the time that I was born, I wasn't even a real boy. I was a subject of Queen Elizabeth, but not a real boy. And it was after that we had a referendum and then what came up here, I went from being an Aboriginal to being a real boy. Right, right. Quite a story. And and I was also impressed with with when you talked about closing the gap and how um you your mother didn't make it to high school. No, but my, and my, 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 did primary school and she didn't go to high school, she was a domestic servant. And in a single generation in our family, we went from somebody being a domestic servant to somebody who was actually able to graduate in the medicine, um, uh, to get a postgraduate academic fellowship, um, to get awarded by that college a life fellowship. But the but, you know, these are just extraordinary and unimaginable things. Um, um, that that I know that when when Grace was a child going to primary school in Queensland many, many years ago, and if the inspector for schools had come along, there's no chance that they would have said, oh, so who's going to have a bright future? Because nobody would have said, Grace here is going to have a son who becomes a doctor, and then she's going to have two grandchildren who are a vet and a doctor. That would just never have happened. Um, if, if the headmaster had thought that, he would have been writing a subject for the institution. So ridiculous in the first place. Um, um, and so, what can happen if a child just gets a right to them? And I, and I think one of the things that came from our discussion is the hopefulness that you carry. Yes. And and the sense that things have improved. Things have been as as bad as things might be. Things are so much better than they than they <clears throat> ever ever were. You know, if you go back just a generation before men. Um, uh, uh, People were, were being courted um, for speaking in their own language. Um, um, uh, people were, were being 
put it up into the concentration camps known as commissions. But terrible, terrible things that happened to people, and everybody was okay with it. And now, just you know, another generation later, um, things are so different. Um, um, there's a long way to go. There's a lot of Aboriginal people for whom their lives have not improved significantly. But two thirds of us, two thirds of us now live in Aboriginal lives. Um, um, two thirds of Indigenous Australians live lives that other people would not have seen as being particularly in the um, um, but the, that we have been closing in the that we have been giving wage strikes for it. And you know, the young people in, in the Australian Indigenous Doctors Association, these kids are not just coping, they're thriving, you know, and they're pushing away, they're hitting above their mind. You know, mm -hmm. my own college, but there's a bunch of young Aboriginal people, young Aboriginal doctors, um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australian doctors, who are, there, who, are, who, who are achieving things at a young stage in their career, which for other doctors, even for other doctors now, is unimaginable. And these, and these people are just aging people like which were born out of the Australian ways and they were absent. And they, they tell me that they would get to the promised land. It's the, I had that, I know this is sort of a, 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 a very modest thing to say, but I think I have an understanding of what, what Dr. King had felt like, where he said it doesn't matter to me. You know, mm -hmm. that, that I don't care if I leave the city of Thomas Land because I look at these young people and I know it will happen, that we will cross Jordan and, and we will get to the Thomas Land, but they will be there. These young people are unstoppable. They are amazing. And it's just fabulous to see. And that's, and that's incredible. And so that's the end of our short version of the interview with Louis Peachy. And I hope it's inspired you to watch the long version, which is really good. So thank you everyone for listening and thank you, Louis, for being a part of this program. <laughs>